An essay is a short form of uh, literary composition based on a single subject matter and often gives the personal opinion of the author of the essay. The term essay is derived from the French word essayer which means to attempt or to try. A 16th century French man named Michael de Montaigne is known to be the first man to create the modern day definition of essay which uh, he called means he called his writings as exercises meaning that he was uh, simply trying to get his thoughts on paper or he was giving an attempt to his thoughts in writing. The standard definitions uh, often, the standard definitions of essay often stress the loose structure or uh, uh, shapelessness of the essay. Means essay is known to be a shapeless composition, a structure without any clear cut uh, formation. In this context, uh, the definition given by Dr. Johnson is important. He said, an essay is uh, an irregular, indigestous, indigested piece, not a regular and orderly performance. There is another uh, very famous definition given by a uh, very famous essayist, Aldous Huxley. This famous English essayist defined essay as <clears throat> a literary device for saying almost everything about almost anything. The Oxford uh, Dictionary describes essay as a short piece of writing on a particular subject. In simple words, we can define essay as a short composition in prose that undertakes to discuss a matter or expresses a point of view or persuades the readers to accept a thesis on any given subject or simply to entertain. In formation, in structure, in length, essays are shorter than a thesis or any dissertation and in this way essays deal with the matter at hand in a very limited way. Essays can deal with many different themes for example, as an analysis of a text or uh, sharing any political opinion or sharing any scientific ideas, abstract concepts or an essay simply may be uh, a fragment of any autobiography and so on. So the essays can be written on uh, any subject on any theme. An essay may either be a formal or be an informal one. An essay which expresses the author's argument about a particular subject may be a formal or may be an informal. A formal essay has a serious purpose and uh, it is highly structured organization while an informal essay may contain humor, any personal recollections of the writer or it simply may be an anecdote <coughs> or an informal essay may be any sort of organization or any form which the author likes or the author wishes to share. Uh, here one point is uh, important to notice 
that while a formal essay has more detached tone, it can also represent the author's personal opinions and may be written from the author's point of view. That even a formal essay may also have a writer's personal point of view on any subject. As far as uh, the form of the essay is concerned, the essay may be of any of the two forms. It may be a literary or a non-literary essay. First, we'll discuss the literary essays. Literary essays are broadly of four types. First, we'll discuss expository essays. The essays uh, written to explore and explain ideas are called expository essays uh, because they expose truths or the truth which the writer believes to be true. So such essays where some truths are exposed are known to be expository essays. These essays uh, will be more formal types of essays usually written in third person and are more objective. There are many forms, each one having its own organizational pattern. In an expository essay, essay the writer gives an explanation of an idea or theme or issue to the target audience by giving his personal opinions. This essay is presented through examples, definitions, comparisons, and even contrasts. The next form of literary essays is descriptive essay. As uh, it sounds, a descriptive essay gives a description about a particular topic or describes the traits and characteristics of something or some person uh, in detail. It describes something or describes some person. Uh, this kind of essay allows artistic freedom and also creates images in the minds of readers through the use of senses. The goal of uh, a descriptive essay, the target or the objective of the writer who writes a descriptive, a descriptive essay is uh, to vividly describe an event, uh, uh, any item or any place or uh, any personal memory of the writer, etc. This kind of essay, the descriptive essay, may be written in any point of view, depending on what is being described by the writer. Uh, in this kind of uh, writing, there is a lot of freedom of language in descriptive essay, uh, which can even include uh, a figurative language as well. Another form of literary essay is narrative essay. As we know, a narrative means a story. So, a narrative essay will illustrate and describe an event of some kind to tell a story. Most times, uh, they will be written in first person. So, narrative essays are written in first person where some event or some story is described. The writer in this kind of essay will use uh, descriptive terms and may have paragraphs that tell a beginning, a middle and an end in place of uh, the uh, general composition of five paragraphs. The narrative essay is uh, uh, non-fiction but describes a story with sensory descriptions. We, we have to uh, give freedom uh, to our imagination uh, through images created in the mind. The writer not only tells a story in this kind of essay, but also makes a point of view by giving reasons. The last form of uh, the fourth and the last form of uh, literary essay is persuasive essay. In this type of essay, the writer tries to convince his readers to adopt his position or his personal point of view on any issue. And for this end, for this purpose, the writer also provides 
solid reasoning in this connection. An argumentative paper, uh, where which is generally a persuasive essay, presents an idea or concept uh, with the intention of attempting to change a reader's mind or actions. Means the purpose of uh, writing such kind of essays, the persuasive essays, is to persuade the reader uh, to believe in what the writer intends the readers to believe in. This kind of essay is called a persuasive essay as uh, there will be a premise uh, followed by uh, some evidences to persuade why you should believe the premise or the claim of the writer. Means the writer supports his premise, uh, his claim with some arguments and attempts to persuade the readers. And uh, in writing such kind of essays, a lot of research is required uh, at the end of uh, the writer to claim and to defend an idea that the writer believes in. Such kind of essays, the persuasive essays, are also called argumentative essays. Non-literary essays uh, could also be of uh, the same categories, the four, four, four categories discussed above, but they could be written in any format. Now, let's discuss what are the functions of essay. The function or the aim and objective of an essay depends upon the subject matter. Whether the writer wants to inform or wants to persuade or wishes to explain or simply to entertain. So, an essay may have uh, any objective of the writer, maybe uh, any function that the writer wants to solve. In fact, uh, the essay increases the analytical and uh, intellectual abilities of the writer and at the same time it enhances the analytical and uh, intellectual abilities of the readers. This kind of essay evaluates, uh, analyzes, evaluates and uh, tests the writing skill of a writer also. And uh, uh, his thinking and uh, uh, his organization, organizational skill is also tested in such kind of uh, essays. Through an essay, a writer presents his argument in a more sophisticated manner. Means he cannot uh, take it uh, uh, for granted that what he is talking about he has to be, you know, a, lit a little bit refined, a little bit sophisticated when he is talking about any issue while he is writing any essay. Uh, from the writer's point of view, we have discussed, but uh, uh, when a reader reads an essay, it encourages a, 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 the reading of a, an essay encourages readers to develop concepts and uh, skills. Uh, it develops, the reading of an essay develops uh, the skills like analysis, comparison and contrast and also it enhances the ability of the readers for clarity, exposition, conciseness and persuasion. Let us now discuss uh, uh, short uh, historical survey of essay means let's discuss the brief brief historical survey of uh, essay francis bacon who is uh, uh, a 16th century writer elizabethan writer is generally regarded as the father of the english essay because he was the first to use the word essay in england and his volume of essays, which was published in the year 1597, was the first work of prose composition in this genre. Bacon is the first real essayist in England and also one of the greatest. The term essay and uh, the general conception of this literary kind uh, he borrowed, uh, Bacon borrowed from 
the French essayist Montaigne, uh, which we have discussed in the beginning of uh, this video, a French writer. But Bacon filled this form with material drawn from his own mind, from his own creative mind. Uh, Bacon regarded the essay as a receptacle for detached thoughts and that's why he called his essays dispersed meditations. Bacon, uh, who was uh, a very busy man of the world, uh, he had the habit of uh, jotting down his experiences and uh, his views on man and uh, the issues related to human life. That is why he defined his essays as counsel, civil and moral. Bacon's uh, purpose in writing an essay was not to preach uh, an ideal morality, but uh, to give valuable guidance on a variety of subjects, uh, the subjects drawn from day-to-day -day affairs of practical life. Uh, that's why it was that his essays came home to man's business and bosom. It is said that Bacon's essays were uh, practically very useful for readers and they are related to day-to-day -day affairs. That's why his essays were immensely popular and uh, even they are popular amongst the readers today. Bacon's essays uh, in structure uh, are of uh, aphoristic kind, means he used too many aphorisms in his essays. The early half of uh, the 17th century marks another significant advance in the development of the English essay. The period uh, uh, 17th century, the beginning of the 17th century period, witnessed the rise of another kind of essay, uh, which is known as the character essay. In this phase, there flourished a number of character writers who had uh, the ancient Greek essayist Theophrastus as their model. The character writers of that time took uh, Theophrastus as their model and uh, on the style of Theophrastus, they wrote their character essays. The writers of uh, that time, the early half of the 17th century, gave short, minute character sketches and uh, such character sketches were uh, minute but very humorous and they were about various types of people from all walks of society. The best known essayists of this group are uh, Joseph Hall. Uh, Joseph Hall, who uh, is claimed to be the first English satirist and uh, equally noteworthy is uh, uh, John Earle and uh, Sir Thomas Overbury. The later half uh, of uh, the 17th century, uh, which is in literature known as the Restoration Period, is significant from the point of view of the development of the critical essays. In this phase, uh, some uh, writers, many of the writers of that time wrote uh, essays on uh, the critical topics. In, out of all the writers, the name of Dryden is very important. Dryden's uh, innumerable prefaces, uh, dedications, etc. are in the nature of uh, critical essays. Means his style, when he writes about any preface or any dedications, were uh, more about critical style of writing and are known as known as critical essays. Dryden's uh, contribution of this style led to the development of the middle style of English prose, uh, which is a style uh, more suited to miscellaneous purpose than the uh, decorative ornate style of his previous writers, his predecessors. With the rise of uh, the periodical press, uh, means uh, there was a tumor, the printing press uh, was developed and printing, printing became uh, cheaper 
and uh, there was uh, a widespread uh, circulation of uh, periodicals and periodicals very popular amongst the people in uh, the 18th century so with the rise of the periodical press in the beginning of uh, the 18th century the essay took a long stride forward there was too much development in essays in the 18th century especially in the beginning of the 18th century uh, the struggle for uh, political supremacy between the two political parties of that time the whigs and the tories resulted in the publication of a large number of journals a large number of periodicals and uh, the important names of that phase are the tatler and the spectator uh, the periodicals and the journals which were founded by edison and steel the aim of uh, these two collaborators um, edison and steel was of course social reform uh, to uh, critically discuss the manner and morals of the age in which they lived more particularly their aim was um, to discuss the frivolities of the female sex of their time edison's uh, essays have uh, the rare charm of humor delicate gentlemanly urbane and uh, tolerant type of edison uh, perfected the middle style means the style which was uh, uh, introduced by dryden was uh, later on uh, uh, perfected by uh, edison and he laid the lines along which the essay was to be developed by his followers by his successors by his writers of next generation the essays uh, the essayists who maintained the tradition of edison and who had the true essay manner is oliver goldsmith he contributed oliver goldsmith contributed largely to the periodical the b and his series of essays is entitled the chinese letters these essays were uh, later collected and also published in the form of a book under the title the citizen of the world oliver goldsmith's uh, character sketches are remarkable for their simplicity for their grace and a very subtle and uh, kindly gentle humor the comments on uh, english society made by him uh, that we get in his essays are both simple and uh, very pinpointed and shrewd uh, the comments made by him in his essays uh, also give the reflection of the charm of the personality of gold oliver goldsmith Goldsmith's uh, humor is uh, all pervading uh, and uh, it is all artless form in his uh, essays uh, oliver goldsmith uh, gives the impression of grace charm and uh, amiable good humor he is uh, one of the greatest essayist ever produced by england the number of uh, periodicals uh, continued to increase uh, after this period more and more and uh, there is a large number of number of writers wrote essays for the periodical press but uh, uh, nothing significant was produced till we come to the opening year of uh, the 19th century with the spread of education and uh, with the increasing tempo of life the popularity of the essay continued to grow there was uh, a spurt of periodical and literary journals uh, it was it, uh, it was uh, this age is popular for uh, periodical and uh, literary journals uh, the periodicals of that time in a way encouraged essay writing because uh, the people demanded uh, the form and uh, then the essay acquired an additional importance and significance because of 
the periodicals which were very popular in the 19th century in the early part of the 19th century the most important essays of uh, the first decade of the 19th century and uh, the greatest of all essays of england is without doubt charles lamb charles lamb was uh, a charming man a delightful talker and uh, uh, one of the least assuming of writers means he never pretended to be a, a writer he simply shared his uh, thoughts in his essays his essays are uh, in a way unequaled in entire english writing uh, the subjects of uh, uh, charles lamb's uh, essays range from uh, chimney sweepers to old china and such and such the humor uh, that runs throughout uh, charles lamb's essays is genial uh, and charming and it is blended with rare skill with a tender pathos that is that has a charm quite uh, its uh, charm of its own means there is a very balanced um, amalgamation or combination of uh, uh, pathos and of humor in the essays of charles lamb at every step uh, in his essays charles lamb we find the essays uh, talking about himself uh, talking the readers into his uh, taking the readers into his confidence and uh, in a way he is confiding confiding to them his most intimate his most most intimate personal joys and sorrows through his essays and uh, that is all done in a very a regular day to day chatty style his essays are uh, truly prose lyrics means they seem more like poetry written in prose lamb is ever pleasing and charming and never not even once does he grow tiresome he's always full of full of verve always full of energy in his essay and um, as far as the style of the writing of charles lamb is concerned it is difficult to describe charles lamb's style because it has a charm all of its own lamb his has his own style of writing and it is incomparable to any other essayist the main uh, source of uh, charm in charles lamb's essays of course humor lamb had the true essay manner and so he has rightly been called the prince of english essays another writer uh, of his time in the beginning of the 19th century uh, william hazlitt is uh, also remarkable william hazlitt is equally important essayist of that era the most uh, important essays of uh, the following period the victorian age are thomas carlyle john ruskin matthew arnold w h pater and or r l stevenson out of all the essays of the victorian age stevenson is the only one who has the true essay manner he is in the direct tradition of charles lamb means his style of writing was very much similar to the style of charles lamb in his essays stevenson shows himself to be the master of an easy graceful style uh, the result uh, the re- this is of course the result of much care and uh, uh, much close attention to the artistic finish at every step in his essays Uh, his essay reveal the charm of the personality of the writer that we learn about uh, the what kind of person stevenson himself was stevenson is often as uh, uh, as confidential and intimate as charles lamb and uh, as the style of charles lamb was that he wrote in a very uh, intimate friendly manner similarly stevenson also wrote in a very intimate and confidential manner the best of uh, stevenson's essays are 
the uh, like the confidential chat of an intimate and uh, any lovable friend the personal note in stevenson's essays is the chief characteristic the essay continues to flourish with uh, added vigor and uh, with more charm in the 20th century the countless periodicals journals magazines and dailies of our time afford unlimited scope for the essays in the 20th century the printing became cheaper and it was available even in the small towns so there is an emergence of large number of writers so was the scope of, scope for writing essays ev lucas robert lynn g k chesterton augustin byrill a g gardiner max beerbohm hilaire belloc and j b priestley are only a few of the leading writers of essays in the 20th century in this context uh, it is important to refer to the names of some american essayists the major american essayists include washington irving emerson thoreau james russell lowell and mark twain in our own era the many periodicals uh, are being printed in scores of essays every week means there is a large number of period periodicals that we see every day uh, every week so is the high, so is the number of essays published in the form of periodicals most of the essays which are written in periodicals are uh, formal in their type and uh, there are some very important names in the modern day essayists for example virginia wolf george orwell e m forster james thurber e b white james baldwin susan santag and tony morrison uh, all these uh, essays are notable practitioners of the essay writing and mostly they are known for their informal style of writing essays so this was all about the discussion of essays uh, their different forms their styles their subjects and their popularity and about a brief historical survey of the essays in literature thank you